I'm going to extend 26 inches. Little weak. What I've got going on here is I want this board the same height as the frame and I'm using the 2x4 as a straight edge and I'll jack this up to meet this board and then go a little bit higher to compensate for the weight that will be placed on it and then I'll have this board here mounted under here that will support this piece in and of itself and then I'll have it rest on the frame just to give it a little added support. So I've got this cut on a slight angle. So when it's in place, as soon as I let the weight off here, it's already pushing on the frame. So to find center for nailing, just use your square. You're going to use a combination of screws and spikes. Screws are excellent for gripping since this trailer is in motion. However, they're hardened steel and they can snap. So the spikes are backup. So we got the gap closed. This will always have a gap because the metal frame is higher, but now it's nice and sturdy. Alright, I've got this support in, and I'm using a straight edge to reveal the gap here. So I'll jack it up, close that gap, and then a little higher, maybe a little bit more. Nice. That's perfect. When I mean, you put a little weight on there, it's it's no movement. It's solid. It's straight. So I'm at the start of the layout of the floor joist, and uh, I'm going to have the width of the building surpass the fenders just a little bit. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, I can lay the 2x4s right on the frame and they'll line up with the outer 2x4 and to gain more square footage. So I'm looking at a measurement of about 75 inches. That would give me a little bit of clearance on both sides of these fender wells. More than likely the fender wells are not square and two, I'd like a little clearance between the frame and the fender so if there's any movement, there's no rubbing or squeaking. So I'll cut two 2x4s at 75 inches and then have a look at it. This is where the 2x4 will land. I have it back here so I can bow it out a little bit. But there's the concept right there. Temporary screw. Man, that's tight. So I have a real small gap there and more on that side, so let me move it a little bit. Wow, a little bit too much. So that's the idea. Thickness of the pencil on each side. No rubbing. So let me do some high speed framing.
At this point, I'm going to square up the frame and you measure from corner to corner, then from that corner to this corner, and you want the measurement to match. If it doesn't match, move the framework one way or the other until you have a match. Then when you fasten the decking, that will keep it square or install a temporary 2x4, screw that down to ensure it stays square, and then attach your decking up to it, remove it, and continue. So I just had an unexpected discovery. My trailer frame's not flat. So that's gonna set me back a little bit. I'm either gonna fill here or in the back or both. Another discovery, I found the frame is twisted just a little bit. So not only do I need spacing here, I'm gonna have to shim it as needed. So what I've done is I got the trailer off its feet and leveled the frame and then shimmed and leveled this frame and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to put it back on its feet and see if it stays the same. That's right. That looks pretty good. Here's an example of the shimming. That side has a 2x4 thickness and this one's 2x4 plus and it leveled everything out. So I'm going to notch out around the fender, take your square, drop it down, tighten it up and you want to take off of this side, not the other, and we want to start about even with the fender. So from there, up here, over. Just like this. Draw you a little line. Cut the notch out. this is not about support it gives you an anchor here nailing for the decking and the outside will be the support so the shim I showed earlier was just an example of what was needed so what I've done I jacked this corner up until it was level and then put this board here all the way across and mounted it to here then let the weight off now it's level same with the one in front of it Support it by the bottom boards here, and I'll keep going. You can see the gap right there. Here's an example. We've jacked it up to get it level, and now we have all this space here. So you get some scrap lumber put on there, a board that's the whole length, and then secure it here, release the tension on the jack, and it stays on the same plane. Here's three I've already done. And that was covering a large gap, so I went heavy duty. And then this is a short. That's sufficient because the next one is on the frame. Look at the distance. I had to raise that. Plus make it secure. 
when I installed that strap, it was temporary, and I was planning to use U-bolts. But then I got to thinking, if you had one on every joist, it would just grip that trailer to the frame and be solid. Whereas U-bolts spaced out might give it a little flex when you go over speed bumps, bridges. I'd like to address the reasoning of this 4x4. Originally, since I didn't have the frame squared out, I wanted something rigid here. And that will carry the load of this 2x4, this joist, and then the frame widens. But as it turns out, when I had the shipment, I used this 2x6. So 2x6 in conjunction with a 2x4 would have been fine. And these straps, they're a bit cheesy. So I'm going to get some U-bolts. And then other areas I can drill through the wood. Straight into the frame. I'm not sure why this occurs. But even if the trailer is on uneven surface, you can always tell if the frame is off. But that looks pretty good. A few more bolts and I'll put the deck on. Got some 4x8 sheets of OSB board, quarter inch thick. Figured I'd use it on the deck, try to keep the trailer lightweight. I just need a skin for the drawers to slide on. And the support will be in the shelving. I'll put the smooth side up. And then I'll paint the bottom with deck paint for moisture protection. the deck I'll use these ring shank nails got some gripping action going drywall nails along with some screws and to make it easy for the center 2x4 for nailing find it here put a nail in on that side get you chalk line line it up File that line with nails, piece of cake. Every four to six inches, and a lot of nails on your joints. That's right. You need a bunch of little kids nailing this stuff for you. Uh-oh, I did a boo-boo. I put the wrong side up. I'll probably destroy that sheet trying to remove it. Hmm. Wow. And they're the type of nails that's got the biters. Man, I might have to just bite the bullet on this one. Coat the bottom and live with it. You know what I mean? I mean, that's ridiculous. Look how many nails I got. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be better just to coat the bottom and leave it alone. That, that there.
<laughs> that would definitely this sheet I either trash the sheet or coat the bottom That sound means I'm coating the bottom. I'm going to try something I probably shouldn't. I tacked the board in place, and I'm going to cut it in place. That's just a guide. See how it goes. That's not the best, but I'll live with it and not do it again. So for the last sheet of sheathing, it's not a full four foot, and I just butt it up on this end, slide it forward, and then mark it right here at the edge. And then I'll do the same on the other side and rip the whole board. Chalk line. Clamping is key to getting a good cut. It's like a puzzle. <laughs> Feels pretty sturdy. Wow. That's pretty sturdy. So in the next video, I'll frame it up and start on the drawer slides. Thanks for watching.